Hello everyone, I'm back for another update. Today is first day of October 2024. I am up on the Raptor Observatory here for the first time. Just off the Allegheny Trail which runs right down there and in that direction. And as you can see, there's a 360 degree view up here. And there's Peters Mountain off to the northeast. Potts Mountain is the next ridge over. You can see Fort Paint Bank from here in that valley. Rain is starting to fall. We have a shower approaching right in that direction, so I'm going to go inside in a minute. Um, that's looking toward a little town of Gaps Mills, West Virginia. This is Peters Mountain looking southwest in the direction that the Appalachian Trail meets up with the Allegheny Trail, about 11 miles from here in that direction. Uh, but you can see there's a pretty heavy shower down in the valley there approaching. Another shower off in that direction. Looking toward uh, White Sulphur Springs in that direction. There's another shower falling from that cloud. Uh, at the moment, I'm relatively dry here, but that rain is moving this way. That's looking east. And these are the rocks that it was built on. They're slab rocks sticking up over the top of the ridge. Now I'm going to go inside now that the rain is starting. Um, you are allowed to camp up here overnight. And this here is the... You even have a count here of migrating large birds of prey here. Uh, this is an observation point for these birds and migration. Here is a chart. Um, that's why they call this the Raptor Observatory because it's used for observing the migration of these different birds that pass through here. And they even list a yearly total back to 1976 of each type of bird and the amounts that were observed. Um, and this is, I have the place to myself. It is Tuesday. This is post storm. Um, here's the current list of birds been observed. So as you can see, that shower is heading this way. The rain is beating against the window already. But off to the northeast, sun is still shining. I packed a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. I'm going to have a nice lunch here while this rain falls. I do have an umbrella with me. Um, here's a log book. Here's the elevation, 3,812 feet. This is a bird count with a book. Very interesting. And here's a little map. Kind of actually looks like they're looking for bird counters. Yeah, it's an idea for me. But I only 
I only live 20 minutes from here. This is my first time here. So what I'm going to talk about today is, again, more post-storm information. But here's some more info on this spot here. Even on the ceiling, they got some um, information up here, additional, telling how the Allegheny Trail started. Um, but what I'm going to talk about today is, Again, more on the storm, Haleen. I'm not minimizing the devastation that it caused and the loss of life. You know, in my last video, I said there's no way it was a Cat 4 storm. I still hold to that. That doesn't mean it wasn't capable of wreaking havoc and destruction. But it could have been a lot worse. It could have been a lot worse if it was a real Cat 4. I know there were reports of Tampa. I watched a few videos. Some people were affected by the tidal surge that moved through there as a storm passed. I thought Tampa Bay, if it was a 4, Tampa would have gotten hit a lot worse. Given the track of the storm, it would have pushed the waters up into Tampa Bay and flooded out a good part of the area. Only minor... Relatively minor uh, effects were felt. Um, I watched the video of a woman who lost everything because her first floor apartment right on the water um, in the Tampa Bay area got flooded out um, from the surge. So they did get several feet of storm surge. But with people living where they are, where they've been building houses, so close to the shoreline, all it takes is a few feet, seven, eight feet storm surge, and everything's obliterated. So, um, Western North Carolina, I used to live in Western North Carolina myself back in the 90s, early 90s. I actually lived there for a few years. And I can understand how the area was devastated by those heavy rains that this storm created. Having lived there myself, having hiked in the area, lived there. And um, it's understandable that the, the geography, the unique outlay of the area, there were pretty much only several ways to get in and out of that area. And all these areas were blocked by flooding, washed out roads. And so it was a terrible, terrible situation down there created by this storm. So I'm not minimizing. It's not that I don't have compassion, I do. For all these people that were so adversely impacted lives lost hundreds maybe even more died as a result of this storm in spite of the there was warrant advance warning that the storm was coming um, but most people chose to not uh, leave the area beforehand and of course that's a tough thing to call but they the area had received out 20 inches of rain even before this storm hit so yeah, that would be high time to hightail it out of there. If you've already gotten 20 inches of rain and then this storm on top of it, they had insult to injury hits. Yeah, it's time to get out of there. Um, but here where I am, we really were not adversely impacted. I hiked up the trail here. It's a little less than a mile. There was only one blow down I had to climb over just before getting to the tower. The tower is in good shape. There's no damage up here. Um, in spite of the gale force winds that came through on Friday, this tower looks pretty good shape. It's solid. So... What about an update on these other storms? Well, the one out in the Atlantic I mentioned of Africa appears to be 
at least the first of the two, appears to be turning up harmlessly into the central Atlantic northward. The other one behind it, though, not sure yet where that's going to go, but we are coming into October. There is some colder weather on the horizon coming into the U.S., and that might put a damper on the season once colder air gets here. Um, so, the threat in the Gulf is still there. I'm again leaning toward the fact that the Gulf is tapped out. I'm highly doubtful there's going to be a yet another storm in the Gulf. I, I could be wrong. Uh, here's a peek outside. And there's that rain shower. little break in the clouds right over there I know some people do feel that the storm was entirely a natural cycle that man had nothing to do with the creation of it I know that in 1916 did some research. The Asheville area of North Carolina got a similar scenario, but in that case, there were two back-to-back -back storms. This was only one storm alone that dropped all this rain. And the, the one in uh, 2004 as well was back-to-back, -back, but again, it did not turn into a terrible disaster like this. Even in 2004, there were a lot of inconveniences but it was nothing like this so what's going to happen next Helene's gone it's a wait and see on that gulf system if it's going to develop it's a wait and see on the one out in the Atlantic I, Kirk is not really going anywhere. It appears it's just going to go into the Atlantic. Whether it develops into a hurricane or not remains to be seen. Isaac is gone. Joyce is gone. So really, we're down to the last two systems. Um, and the shower has arrived. But... It's a wait and see on this. I was doing some research on solar cycles and doing comparisons. The interesting thing about solar cycle 25 that I found that sets it apart is the fact that in August 2024, the sunspot count, for the first time in the cycle, exceeded 200 for the whole month as a monthly average. That's 56 months into the cycle. That has never happened before in the rec historical record. Usually, most cycles that go over 200 um, do it much earlier in the cycle than 56 months. I saw nothing that even came close to the first month being 56 months in. Most of the time, it was basically half that in most cycles, especially in the 20th century. Most of the cycles went up over 200 within the first 24 months, 30 months of the cycle. We're already up over 200. This is 56 months into the cycle. We just hit 200. Um, the other cycles that were even remotely comparable were way back in the 1800s. Um, and in most cases, those cycles did not remain above 200 for very long. They dropped back pretty quickly. Whereas the ones that got up to 200 sunspots earlier stayed above 200 for many months. 
in a row. That's why the warming occurred. I mean, the 20th century. But however, not all cycles get up above 200. There were a number of cycles, the latest being the last one, 24, that never did. 24 didn't even get above 150 in the whole cycle. Before that, you have to go all the way back to 20, back in the early 70s, they almost got up to 200. Just short, 198 was the max in that one. But before that, you have to go all the way back to the 1800s to find cycles that stayed below 200. Um, the most consecutive cycles in a row in the record that stayed below 200 was back in the early 1800s when they had three consecutive cycles in the early 1800s that stayed below 200. That has not happened since. We have not had two consecutive cycles. Have Still have not, because this one just got above 200. We did have a few more after that. Um, in the early 1900s, um, there was um, a couple that stayed um, below 200, late 1800s. And these are all periods where the climate was a little cooler. Whereas the, the cycles that stayed above 200, there's quite a variation if you do the research in solar cycles. They're not all identical. As far as the timing, how quickly it got intense, or how slow it took, there's, there's a, so much variation I found. So it looks like the shower has moved on. And um, looks like now in that direction they're getting some rainfall to the northeast. This is the shower that just moved through. Gap Mills is actually in that direction where that indentation is. Moncove Lake is just beyond that. Um, looks like where that cloud is. They got a fake owl on a post. Um, this is going to be it for this video. Uh, I'm going to hang out here a little while, have some lunch. Yeah, it looks like the sun is, at least for now, going to come back out, but there is some more rain in the distance. Looked on the radar, there is a line of showers moving across West Virginia right now, and that must be the cloud tops from that in the distance. This is going to be it. I'll be back again soon.